And now it's time for Spotlight on the Saints. Remember, a saint is someone who lives a life that lets the sun shine through. Have you ever felt inadequate? I know for me, growing up, that was a constant thought. I never thought that I was smart enough or tall enough or good enough. I used to describe myself as an egomaniac with a poor self-esteem. Now, when I began my faith journey, I wasn't even sure that there was a God. And then I wondered if there was such a huge God, how could he know me? Then if he did know me, I doubted even if he'd like me, much less love me. Eventually, I came to believe that there is a God and he does love me. But then even if he loved me, he probably couldn't use me because of my brokenness. In time, I was amazed to find out that he could use me in spite of my brokenness. And finally, I've come to believe that he uses me because of my brokenness. Today, we're going to shine a spotlight on a saint who didn't come from a great family. In fact, he was an orphan. He wasn't brave. He's fled to the hills when things got tough. He wasn't a great writer or preacher. He was simply a man who could pray in solitude. Because he used the gift of solitude and prayer, he became loved and eventually a saint. So today we spend the, turn the spotlight on St. Paul the Hermit, whose feast day is January the 15th. Now it's unclear what we really know about Paul's life, you know, how much is fable and how much is fact. He's called the first sermon. He's known as the father of monastism. That's spending your days praying in a monastery. He's called the patron of the Diocese of San Pablo of the Philippines. Paul was reportedly born in Egypt when he was orphaned by the age of 15. He is also a learned and, a, and devout young man, but during the persecution of Decius in Egypt in the year 250, Paul was forced to hide in the home of a friend. Fearing a brother-in-law was going to betray him, he fled to a cave in the desert. His plan was to return once the persecution ended, but the sweetness of solitude and heavenly contemplation had convinced him to stay. He went on to live in that cave for the next 90 years. A nearby spring gave him something to drink and a palm tree furnished him with clothing and nourishment. Legend has it that after 20 years of solitude, a bird began bringing him half a loaf of bread each day. Without knowing what was happening in the world, Paul prayed that the world would become a better place. St. Anthony of Egypt attested to St. Paul's holy life, tempted by the thought that no one had served God in the wilderness longer than he. Anthony was led by God to find Paul and acknowledge him as a man more perfect than himself. The raven that day brought a whole loaf of bread instead of the usual half. And as Paul predicted, Anthony would return to bury his new friend. Thought to have been about 112 years old when he died, Paul is known as the, as the first hermit. His feast day is celebrated in the East, and it's also commemorated in the Armenian Rites of the Mass. So what now what? We don't look at the saints like you look at a historical figure that might be on a history test. No, we look at saints to learn what lessons their lives have for our lives. What can they tell us about how we are to live our life today? Some lessons that we can take from St. Paul are that God loves us in spite of our brokenness. That God uses us in spite of our brokenness. And God can use us because of our brokenness. We are always good enough for God. Thanks for watching. My name is Dave, and I'm not in charge.